Sheila, what kind of arrangements should parents make at the time of adoption and immediately after that? Maybe can you tell us something about feeding the child? Okay, I think that's an important question. Uh this is to do with the transition issue that we were discussing. Now as I had said, uh there is a temptation that adopted parents have to compensate uh for for uh, not having been there earlier for what the child may have missed out nutritionally mm-hmm. and and again it's a legitimate one mm-hmm. so there is a tendency sometimes to feed a lot of different kinds of food and uh, also in large quantities because a child may look thin or weak or tiny uh, but there are some things to keep in mind okay. when transitioning uh, in terms of food and feeding Mm-hmm. uh one is in terms of types of food okay so if it is an infant it would be useful to consult a pediatrician mm-hmm. and uh, check on um, formula versus pasteurized milk and you know have a clear sort of understanding on uh, what kind of formula to use um at what dilution levels in terms of the child's digestive capacity which is again age dependent yes, yes so that would be important because you know children's digestive systems are so sensitive mm-hmm. uh whether it is to formula or quantity of food or types of food and that's why this is important the other issue is that um if it's not an infant but it's a slightly older child you know a 3 year old a 4 year old and so on they are also used to eating certain foods in the child care institution mm-hmm. and those tend to be traditional foods you mm-hmm. know depending on the state yeah. um or which part of the country this institution was located in so in karnataka for example they have fed uh, millets and you know porridge and stuff made of millets um in the south they may be more rice eating and sambar eating in the north it's possibly chapati and dal and so on so one must inquire from the institution what they were feeding the child and we as adoptive parents uh need to make the same kind of food there's always google these days so yeah. if you come from a totally different part of the country or a different part of the world even uh we can try and get ingredients as close as possible yes. and and make similar dishes Um the point is not that children should not be introduced to the foods that the adoptive family eats the point is not solely to introduce them uh to that and suddenly by way of uh, pasta and omelet and you know as much as you may consider these to be healthy or something that the child may enjoy in fact the child may not enjoy them at all because the child has never developed a taste for these foods before mm-hmm. so to give the traditional foods that the child is used to and then also introduce the child to the family foods little yeah. by little in combination so the child gets a bit of both and then you know the child can decide and you proceed as you know at the child's pace okay uh thank you very much but what about the sleeping arrangements they need to make well that's a good question and most people tend to take that for granted when actually it's a very important part of both the uh, child care as well as the bonding process okay now um there tends to be a perception that a child who's been in an institution with 50 to 100 other children would want space and you know this beautiful bright sunny room with toys and so on and by all means adopted parents can have that but uh, again it's about what children are used to yes. so when a child first comes home um whether it is an infant or a young child it is best for that child to sleep in a little cot uh, that is right next to you yours where the adoptive parents can reach out at any point in the night to reassure the child or to touch and pat the child and so on okay. uh, because it can be very very overwhelming and frightening for a child to be in a new space yes. and to be alone also remember the child has um, been sleeping with several other children in the yeah. same space so they are used to hearing other children and noises and you know chatter and so on and the sudden silence can also be very scary so um one is uh, one thing that could be done is to turn on the radio 
or music at very low level so that there is some sense of noise and sound so the child feels uh, comfortable and you know for the parents to be around as much as possible so the child doesn't feel lonely um regarding bedding uh, rubber sheets very important to put under the bed clothes and uh, we strongly recommend that you get from the institution a set of uh, sheets pillowcases and you know a blanket that the child was using and continue to use those because the child then has a sense of familiarity and continuity you know and young children especially um given their um, sensory needs and abilities uh, you may find um, are very anxious and even cranky and you're wondering why because you know you've got this beautiful room and these lovely clean shining mickey mouse sheets and you think that the child that should be happy but actually the child is really nervous and uncomfortable because everything smells so unfamiliar uh, that is why it would be good to get some things from the institution and you can just replace them for the institution so these are some arrangements that uh, you could make with regard to sleeping and um, if you do have a separate room for the child uh, that's wonderful uh, take the child there during the day use it for daytime naps okay. uh, playing with the child so that the child gets accustomed okay. to that space and over maybe the coming 6 months uh, to a year you can get the child to transition to his or her own room but in the initial phase particularly for purposes of um, bonding and attachment the child should sleep in the same room uh, as the, the parents. adoptive parents yeah yeah uh do you have any uh, suggestions and uh, uh tips about clothing and hygiene what kind of arrangements they need to make in this regard <clears throat> yes um similar to the sleeping arrangements it would be useful for um the adoptive parents to get some of the clothes from the institution to get at least three sets of clothes which are, again they can replace because it gives children a sense of you know familiarity and mm-hmm. continuity again because these are their clothes yes. remember when a child comes to you from an institution if a child comes to you with absolutely nothing uh you know it's like we are cutting the child off from everything that was familiar and what the child was used to and people the child was used to spaces uh things and therefore if they come with a few sets of clothes it creates that sense of okay, continuity yeah. uh the other issue is again for for adoptive parents as enthusiastic as they may be you know because the joy of having a new baby or a new child and wanting to dress up a child <coughs> which is always such a strong uh, temptation uh, n- needs to be held in a little bit of check you know until the child is comfortable because um they may not be comfortable in some of the clothes we have okay. whereas they used to what they came in from the institution so to keep clothing similar okay uh, and of course to go according to the weather the, mm-hmm. as always to have several sets by way of preparation uh, especially where infants and young children are concerned it is amazing the amount of clothes they can go through mm-hmm. uh, in a yeah, day yeah. because you know they are wet or they spill stuff um, you know they are fed so it would be useful to have washing arrangements in place and several sets whether it's diapers or uh, other clothes ashila what about hygiene and bathing the child yeah these are questions again that often get missed so i'm glad you raised them um so children in the institution invariably at least in um, most child care institutions are bathed uh, the traditional way Mm-hmm. which is uh, you know with the caregiver sitting on the floor or a stool and you know the uh, especially infants are, are sort of put across their legs or laps and that's how very young children or infants are bathed yes um and older children invariably are bathed using mug- buckets and mugs so um when babies or young children come to the adoptive parents home they are unlikely to be familiar with more sophisticated ways of bathing like in a bathtub 
or um, shower. So um, again, it may be useful to continue what they were used to in the institution, so that children are comfortable. They see that the method is the same, and you know some of these uh, methods used in the institution are actually very good for attachment and bonding. Mm-hmm. To put the child uh, on your lap or across your legs and bathe him or her, you know, to have the primary caregiver, whether it's the mother or the father, to do that really helps to create bonding. Bath time is about bonding, okay. and it can be made a lot of fun with a few water toys and so on, uh, so that it's just the caregiver and the child, child. having a lot of fun. so it helps to build the relationship and create attachment now where toileting is concerned um where uh, infants are concerned of course um, the issue is uh, much more straightforward in terms of diapers but for older children um often in the child care institution they used to using indian style loos you know where you squat so when they come to certain uh, adoptive families homes where they have a uh, western style right. toilets you must remember that these children have never seen mm. a western uh, style toilet before so they would never know how to use it so don't be surprised or upset if you find them peeing and pooping on the ground because that's what uh, they have yeah. known Used all along also, yeah. yeah so they need to be taught how to use the western style uh, toilet gradually um and a useful way to do this is also to have the in between stage of a potty okay because a western uh, style toilet is high it is deep it can be very intimidating for any child that you are toilet training so just as we do with all our children to have the plastic potty get the child to sit on it and then transition on to the western uh, style toilet uh, would be useful so these are some things i think uh, adoptive parents could keep in mind when it comes to bathing and uh, toileting issues shila what about taking the ch- child out and having the child meet other people when it should be done um again you know parents um are very excited when the new baby or the new child comes home and uh, so are friends and family wanting to see the child as soon as possible uh, again while these are legitimate responses on the part of family and friends it can be very overwhelming for the, for the child, child. to see so many new strange faces mm-hmm. in the child care institution uh, children are of course used to seeing many people several caregivers and other children but these are usually a finite number okay and um, it, it, in the sense that there isn't a new person necessarily every day yeah and also remember that uh, children in institutions do not go out Mm. they never go out especially young children yeah. they're always indoors mm. um they they do not have that kind of social exposure unfortunately yes yes uh so when an adopted child comes home and if um, friends and family members uh, all come at the same time or the child is taken to visit them it can be very unsettling Okay. and anxiety provoking for many children mm-hmm. so they need time to settle and transition so the suggestion is that for the first few days um the child is kept at home so that you know uh, the environment is similar to what the child care institution had that is to remain indoors okay then after a week or so to take the child gradually for short walks outside okay uh for brief periods of time and you know come back to tell family and friends who are really enthusiastic that uh, you are enthusiastic too and that you're excited that they're sharing in your joy but that to allow a little time for the parents and the child to be able to bond mm-hmm. you see it's also very important for the child to be able to recognize these two people as the primary caregivers yeah. because if the child is exposed daily to several people okay sees multiple new faces the child isn't able to really discern then who the two really important mm-hmm. people are mm-hmm. so it would be good for these two people to establish a rapport with the child so that the child understands that these are my main people 
Okay. And then for the child to be exposed to other new people okay. gradually over months. Mm -hmm. There is WhatsApp, there is email, send pictures of your child mm -hmm. to people. Okay. Uh, ask uh, people to send pictures of themselves as in you know close family extended family so you can gradually show the child some of these pictures that is if it is an older child not okay. an infant of course but show the child to say this is auntie this is uncle this is your cousin and so on and you'll be seeing them soon okay. so you know you're building bridges uh -huh. between you know now and the future so you help the child transition similarly um, I think it would also be important <coughs> to show the child a few pictures of um, the institution uh, okay. and you know of uh, children or people there uh, to reassure the child to say that these people are also there you know they are happy and they are carrying on with their routines okay. and so on um, because you're helping children build bridges between their past and their the present, present and the future. Uh, otherwise, children, older children may feel that you, you're just cutting them off from all the people they knew, mm -hmm. you know, their friends, their caregivers and so on. And that can be a very uh, frightening experience and children may not be able to articulate it. Okay. Uh, they may worry that if they tell parents that you know what about those people that you might be upset or offended they may not know how to ask so it would be good to you know tell children these were the people you knew these are the new people you're going to meet okay. and this is how you extend children's social networks and then of course after a few months when your child has settled <coughs> in and uh, uh, bonds have been built then you can throw that party that you wanted to throw to welcome your child and introduce your lovely new child to everybody, your yes, friends and family. family. But to wait on that party for a few months or okay. it could be very overwhelming for the child.